right, so we'll just do a real quick, real quick uh, catch up on what we learned. Uh, Thaddeus, you pretty much went over this uh, from our previous screen, uh, streams. We learned that Allah is a pagan. Uh, he swears uh, upon things that aren't himself, which Muhammad says is a pagan. We learned that marriage is not sacred in Islam, whereas it is very sacred in Christianity. We learned that Allah will not inherit the earth. Allah is a preacher of hypocrisy and Allah tends to focus on hedonism. So with that said, let's just move straight into chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, on the Sermon on the Mount. Continuing with the hypocrisy stuff, hypocritical judgment. So it starts out, do not judge others and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. All right. So this leads me to projection. Uh, Thaddeus, are, are you aware of the definition of projection? And when I'm talking projection, I'm not saying like projector screen or anything like that. I'm talking <laughs> about I'm talking about the the psychological projection that a lot of times people people use. Yeah, you know, uh, talking to Muslims over the last few years, I've gotten quite familiar with this particular mm. air. Uh, yeah. Muslims will come in and they'll they'll say. Uh, you know, your your religion's immoral. Your, your religion's horrible. You you guys are polytheists. And then, and then I'm like, mm, yep. Uh, all the, all that you're saying about us. Uh, why don't you just look at? Why don't you look at your own eye? Yeah. What's the uh, what's the what's the saying? You know, if if you point at someone, you got four fingers or whatever pointing pointing back at you. Uh, it, it tends to be that way. Um, so the actual definition, according to Wikipedia. Uh, is is the psychological proje uh, projection is a process of misinterpreting what is inside or from a um, Christian Muslim perspective, what uh, is within your religion, you are misinterpreting that as something that is outside or coming from the outside, right? So when you're pointing the finger, uh, what a lot of times people with this psychological issue don't realize is that they too have that exact same problem. And in fact, it's a little worse than that. It's, it's not even the, the, the person they're pointing at doesn't actually have that problem. It's actually them who has that problem and they're projecting their own problem onto other people. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I think my, my favorite example of this might be that Muslims will be like, Christians are pagans because they wear a cross as a necklace. And I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe you got like, you know, and it's tiny speck of a point there. But meanwhile, you're literally circling a rock, bowing down to it, kissing it, thinking it forgives your sins. I'd say that's a little more pagan. Just yeah, saying. Pretty, pretty ritualistic. Uh, the way that I look at it is, yeah, of course, uh, we all know, most of us know, a lot didn't know. But we know now that the, the earth is spherical, right? It's, it, it's round. Um, and, you know, they, they do a, a fairly good job at pointing their, you know, forehead, their nose towards that pagan rock that they bow down to five times a day. But what I find funny is uh, their butt is facing the opposite direction and it, it points towards the kata <laughs> as well. True, we true. <laughs> A spherical earth so i, I know it's it's a low low shot muslims i apologize but i've always thought about that and thought it was kind of kind of funny um one one thing i will point out this isn't just a muslim problem this is an everybody problem we all have tendencies no matter what our faith our background anything like that is we all have tendencies of using projection okay um and Jesus is doing a great thing here. He's pointing this issue out, right? So what, what we all should take on from what Jesus is telling us is that we all need to be self-aware. Uh, we should be constantly scanning within ourselves, figuring out what our own issues, contemplating how to overcome those shortcomings um, so that we can 
correct or pull the, the plank out of our own eye before we start helping other people with their with their specs okay so um the the, the thing with this it's not me it's you right uh, very often the accuser of the wrongdoing is often the perpetrator themselves of that same wrongdoing. Uh, in other words, the smeller is the feller. Um, bad joke again. Um, so th 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 this is basically what I mean, right? So uh, people who lie a lot tend to think that everyone else is lying a lot. People who cheat who are cheaters tend to think everybody else is cheaters. Scammers tend to think that other people are trying to scam them. This is just simply a guilty conscience issue. Um, and so insecure people, right, people who are very insecure, they will downplay or outright deny their own guilt. They'll look past the log in their own eye and see other people's specs in their eye. Um, and then they will exaggerate other people's shortcomings, right? So this as you have alluded to, Thaddeus, is a commonly displayed Dawa tactic. Right, so you guys are going to see this. We're, I, I'm, I'm going to be a prophet today, probably a better prophet than Muhammad. You will <laughs> see this happen in the comment sections. It may have already happened right now. I'm not paying attention. Uh, you will see it in the comment section uh, below after the, our video is played. Anytime you see an impromptu debate, if you watch people at Speaker's Corner or... Um, uh, a, 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 just a formal type of debate, you're going to see this tactic used. Pay attention to it. See if you can't point out the fallacies in which um, the opponent is using. Now, I'm not saying only Muslims do this. I've seen Christians do this and other people do this, but this is a very common, and I almost think that the, the Dawagandists are trained to do this. Um, because if you're not aware of their tactics, you might be swayed by their argumentation, right? It's a fallacious form of argumentation. Now, they typically express their fallacious arguments in three main ways. So the first one, the straw man fallacy. So a straw man is simply the opponent twisting the actual position of their interlocutor to something that is not reflective of their beliefs. And then once they have built up this false belief of their opponent, they can knock it down, right? So they just make, a, they just turn their opponent uh, into a, a, or they seemingly turn their opponent into a straw man or a punching bag, something that's inanimate and easy to knock over. Most of the time, what happens is they build this thing up to where their opponent would be like, I don't actually, I agree with you, whatever you just made up, I would, I would agree is false, but that's not my actual uh, position. So you'll see a lot of Muslims use the straw man fallacy. You'll also see them using red herrings. This is when the opponent brings up an obscure, unrelated argument that has nothing to do with the actual topic at hand. And don't worry, I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples. We got straw man, we got red herring, uh, we have the two cool quay fallacy, and I think they actually use this one almost the most, especially in the comments section. Uh, basically, what this is is uh, the opponent instead of defending their own position, they instead point the finger. Right? It's not you, it's me. They point the finger and say, well, you actually have this problem too, right? Uh, some people call it a what about ism or like the, the U2, uh, not the band U2, uh, but the, the also you uh, type of fallacy, right? They, they basically, they say two wrongs makes a right. And what they end up doing is they don't, they don't, they don't actually, they, they're in, actually, they're implying that uh, they actually do have that problem. So when someone uses a two quo quay fallacy, they're implying that they do have that problem, but we're not going to talk about it because you also have that problem with the intent of making you stop attacking their position so that your position uh, is not exposed. Um, but uh, I'm going to give you an example of how this works, right? Christians, we all know one of the easiest things to attack is the character of Muhammad. The easiest thing to attack about the character of Muhammad is the fact that he married a six-year-old girl when he was 50 years old, and then he consummated the marriage with her 
when she was nine years old. Now, she was prepubescent based on all of the sources, but that's neither here nor there. So we bring that up, right? That's that's the topic of the discussion, right? Assuming we didn't just throw that out of nowhere too. But let's say that that's the topic of discussion. And what are they typically going to say, Thaddeus? What, what do you think their response might be? Well, it's going to go one in two places. Mm-hmm. Uh, most commonly, Mary was 12. Yep. When, when, yeah. when she birthed your God. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they're going to, so what is that? That's what, what, what kind of fallacy is that? So that's going to be a, a two quote way fallacy it because is. they, they're, uh, you know, saying they're not defending their religion in any way. They're just saying, right. well, you allegedly have the same problem. And of course it also is just outright false. Right. And there is no reason to believe that Mary was 12 years old. Exactly right. So those types of arguments are. Uh, I'll explain how they're actually all three simultaneously. They're they're um, they're straw men, they're red herrings, and they're two quoque fallacies simultaneously. It's pretty amazing. It's a trinity of fallacies that Muslims tend to use. It's ironic to me, but it's uh, it's pretty interesting, right? So. Um, yep, and as uh, Alpha Omega pointed out, that Mary was also a virgin, so her age is actually totally <laughs> irrelevant, which is true. I mean, yeah. uh, even the Muslims would agree with that statement that Mary was yeah. a virgin, she, but somehow they don't yeah. seem to see what the problem it, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a strange it's a strange world that we live in, Thaddeus. Uh, I don't try to make sense of it. Um, so. Uh, it, you're, you're right along the lines. The argument that I actually hear uh, as frequently, if not a little bit more frequently, is, well, Isaac married the three-year-old Rebecca. You've heard that one before, right? Oh, yeah. I, when I said one of two places, that was, mm-hmm. of course, the other one okay. in my mind. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess the third argument, I, I thought you're the second argument you were going to use is, well, she, if I do this random weird math equation, reverse math, <laughs> uh, from, uh, Aisha's sister's age to her death, she was 18 or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. That you know, would, you deny <laughs> the, deny the 15, 18, 20, whatever number of mm-hmm. Sahih Hadith that say she was nine right. and go with, with some sort of calculation based on six different hadith mm-hmm. that may or may not even be sahih. If you could do all this math, then you can right. get her to 18. <laughs> right, which which muddies the water so much and uh, requires a whole bunch of speculation and assumption to be able to come to any sort of conclusion, right? But at least if they go that route, right, they're not committing the logical fallacy. They're actually attempting to address your uh, polemic against their profit, right? Um, but this is what they typically do, right? So you say Aisha was six, she was nine when uh, Muhammad consummated the marriage with her, and they'll say, well, Isaac married a three-year-old Rebecca, right? Without denying the clear pedophilia of their fake prophet. So this is, I'm going to explain all of this, right? This is a straw man because the accusation is false, right? So first and foremost, they are making you, or they're trying to make you defend a position that is uh, 100% untrue, right? Rebecca was certainly not three years old. I think I have a picture. Here's Rebecca at the well. This is not the actual picture of it, but, uh, you know, when you read the story, clearly it's a it's a woman old enough to, you know, be able to water all of the camels and have adult conversations and carry multiple jugs of water. Uh, I've got a video on this. Uh, I know Islam Critiqued has one or two really good videos on this as well. So if you are interested in this, if you have heard that argument, go ahead and look up those two things. It's pretty it's pretty silly. Or actually just read the Bible and, and ask yourself the question, when we first meet Rebecca, does she sound like a three-year-old? How many potty accidents did she have? How many times <laughs> did she suck her thumb? How many times did she get lost in the middle of the desert, right? All of those types of questions that we should be asking um, that uh, are, are apparently not not there. Um, I don't know a whole lot of three year olds that speak in absolute complete sentences and have extensive knowledge about you know uh, who their parents are, who their brothers are, how much uh, hay and, and fodder is at their barn, and if there's enough space for all the camels. Uh, but the three year old, according to them, uh, Rebecca apparently had the ability to do that. So that's the straw man. First and foremost, it's a completely false narrative. Uh, just real quickly before you move on, uh, Avalanche of Apostasy asks where do Muslims get the idea that Rebecca was three, and it's kind of the same as where they get the idea that Aisha was eighteen. They they uh, 
do a bunch of math equations, make a bunch of false assumptions to get there. And then suddenly, boom, she's 30. Yeah, no, it, it, exactly. So it, it is 100% based on a speculative assumption. Um, I've broken this down very extensively. I'm actually planning on doing a second video on this particular topic because believe it or not, that's one of my most commented on videos for Muslims. Uh, even though, you know, I make fun of them and say how silly they are for trying to say that, um, that is their typical argument. The second argument that they use is they go straight to the Jewish sources. Of course, they'll use Jewish sources when they suit the Muslim position. And then they will, of course, reject Jewish sources when it does not suit their position. So one of the things they'll say is, you know, one of the sages said that Rebecca was three years old. Um, so uh, again, when you read the Bible, it's it's very clear that it's not it. Uh, Mary, I don't know if she's still in the chat or not. Uh, in in one of our, our groups, or kind of our private groups we have together, <laughs> Mary, I don't know how you do this. Uh, she wrote like a 25 or a 28 page single spaced paper on this, citing all the different sources, you know, going through all the different arguments, uh, provided pictures, all kinds of incredible stuff. So if, if you guys want that, I'm pimping you out, Mary, uh, <laughs> go ahead and ask Mary and, uh, she, she might, um, <laughs> she may send you that article, um, or Thaddeus, if you want to have her on your channel or something, that might be an interesting, interesting topic for you guys. Yeah, I actually, interestingly enough, I asked her on for that exact topic. So oh, well, we'll there see. you go. Dude, did, did she send you the paper that she wrote? Yeah, she did. Was it, was that 25 pages or 28? I couldn't remember. Uh, something like that. I, I don't know the exact number, but it, it's very detailed. Very in yeah, depth. And she like did it on a weekend, you know, meanwhile, like managing 10 kids, six dogs, and uh, at least one <laughs> husband. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, how, how do people do that? Uh, we've totally digressed. So straw man, it's untrue. So, so Mary says she just needs to schedule it. We're looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a straw man. We get that, right? It's a red herring because, well, Thaddeus, what was the original topic? Uh, the topic was Muhammad marrying Aisha. Right. So what does Rebecca and Isaac marrying each other have to do with, you know, anything? Uh, nothing. It doesn't, right? It's a distraction. It's a red herring. All right. Pretty simple there. It's a two quo quay, right? Why is it a two quo quay, you ask? Great question. It's a two quo quay because it is trying to say, well, if you are offended by a, um, a 50 three-year-old consummating marriage with a nine-year-old, then you should also be offended with a 37-year-old um, Isaac marrying and consummating a marriage with a three-year-old, right? That, that, it's saying, well, you can't tell me about my problem because you also have the problem and maybe even worse. Make sense? Uh -huh. um, so again, it's a trinity of bad thinking all wrapped up into one response to a polemic against them, the best thing that they should do is either try to justify why a 53 year old man should climb on top of a nine year old and consummated a marriage with her before her period. Not that even that, even if she had a period, like it would be good. Um, uh, they should try to justify that or they should try to straight up deny that. But then when they run into the issue of, well, what sources do you actually have versus the, you know, five or six Sahih Hadith from Aisha's own mouth, saying that she was six and nine years old. Yeah, I think the only intellectually um, defense a Muslim could offer is, well, God authorized it, so I guess it's okay. Yeah. Not very satisfying, which is why they don't go no. there, but I think that's yeah. the only way they could actually honestly respond. It would just be the like the divine command theory, right? Yeah. Uh, Allah knows best. He knows something that we don't know, so even if we don't agree with it or understand it. We just have to, you know, forget our own intellect that he gave us and not use the intellect that he gave us to trust him. Anyway, again, I always say this, it all makes sense if you don't think about it, right? So <laughs> we've kind of digressed a little bit, but we're, we're getting back to, this is a form of projection, right? The, the using these different kinds of fallacies is, is a Muslim's way of projecting their own issues and trying to force them onto someone else. The Quran itself is actually full of projection, right? While it says repeatedly that it came to confirm previous scripture, right? That's our Bible. 
it clearly contradicts what our Bible says and teaches. And then it goes so far as to say, as the people of the book, Christians and Jewish people who are following the, the scripture that it confirms, are twisting Allah's words, right? We, we have the scriptures is what the argument is. We actually have the right, correct scriptures because all his words is, are in, incorruptible. No man can change them. However, what we have done, and I'm saying we generally to the Muslim perspective, what we have done is we have twisted it, twisted the words, twisted the meaning, right? Um, when it's clear, it's very clear that if anyone's doing the twisting, it's Allah who is doing the twisting, right? He's twisting his own words. He's confirming his own words, and yet he's twisting his own words. Uh, Allah is accusing others of not following the commandments of Allah, while Allah is also not following the commandments of Allah. And so Islam at its core, right, if we're using the Quran, at its core is constantly projecting its own guilt and saying, it's not my problem, this is this is your problem, right? Anything you'd like to add to that, Mr. Thaddeus, or anybody in the chat? A uh, couple, yeah, a couple comments from the chat here. Uh, that this is relevant to what we're we're about to talk to, mm -hmm. about. So I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, Trinity Matrix says the funny thing <laughs> is that all it says over and over again to trust the Bible as an authority. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about authority in a little bit here. Yep. Uh, yet, in what mosque will you find a Bible or a Torah? And then I, I enjoyed this little comment here. We got a baby icon and three camels, and then it says, Becca, what are the camels? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Becca, dude. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. She grew up to be like a 10-time 10 10 Olympic champion. She was a champion of strength and intellect. She was an amazing three-year-old. Oh. Yeah, I mean, carrying uh, enough water to satisfy a large group of camels, uh, which each, you know, bucket of water will, will weigh 20, 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. Man, at that at that rate, you're right. She's going to be an Olympic weightlifter or something. Yeah, no, it, it, exactly. Um, uh, unless she's one of the ants that Solomon talked to, right? Because ants can carry like ten times their own body weight or something. Mm, true, true. So this could have just been one of the miracles of Allah giving uh, a human being ant ant strength, which I think is probably inspired uh, the the ant Marvel movie, right? Um, yeah, I, I think that's based on the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> When I watch Looney Tunes, totally off topic, but when I watch Looney Tunes after I've I learned about the Islamic sources, I can almost I can almost swear to you that the authors of Looney Tunes were reading Islamic sources to come up with the <laughs> concepts, right? With like the devil on one shoulder, the angel on another. Um, There's a whole bunch of other things I, I can't remember exactly what they were. That like when you rewatch like the old Looney Tunes, you're like, this is the Quran. This is amazing. Uh, I believe there's a, a story about uh, a tribe trying to kill Muhammad by pushing a boulder as he was walking by. <laughs> it, I, didn't even I believe that's that. actually true. No, uh, yeah, you know, no, 100%, right. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's Wiley Coyote trying to take care of the roadrunner. Uh, didn't, it didn't happen. It didn't happen for him, at least not that time. Um, we're going to move on to pearls before pigs.